And now, everyone, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to our host, Mary Beth Plank Mezzo. Well, thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks to those of you who are here with us on campus, but also thanks to all of the, those who are here with us online. My name is Mary Beth Plank Mezzo. I'm the Vice President of Staff and Cultural Development for Full Sail University. And I'm hosting the session titled Power to the People, Everyday Leadership Principles for the Entertainment Industry. Please put your hands together and help me welcome our panelists, Leon Hopkins, Phil Palin, and Kirk Wingerson. So let me introduce you to these guys um, for a minute. We've, our first panelist here is Leon Hopkins. He's a graduate of the 1985 Recording Arts Comprehensive Program, in addition to being a Hall of Fame inductee from our Hall of Fame in 2014, our Hall of Fame Five. So Leon has been very busy in his 30 plus year career in live production, working for such bands as Genesis, The Kinks, George Michael, Janet Jackson, Paul McCartney, ZZ Top, and many more, which we'll hear about. But Leon has also worked on other projects like um, the Olympics, ice skating tours. Um, so for Leon, it's not all about the big, big names. Um, it's just about being a part of the industry. So thank you for being here, Leon. Thank you. Um, secondly, we have Phil Palin here with us. Phil is a Los Angeles-based brand strategist who works with TV personalities, experts, and businesses. His roster includes Sharks from Shark Tank, uh, entrepreneurs on ABC's Shark Tank, and personalities on TV shows like Dancing with the Stars, The X Factor, American Idol, Project Runway, MasterChef Junior, The Doctors, and of course many others. Um, Los Angeles is your home, but you speak internationally. And um, so whether it's entertainment, lifestyle, or the world of startups, Phil helps his clients enhance their competitive advantage through a strategic online presence. So that's Phil. And then our third panelist is Kirk Wingerson. He is a creative and marketing communication strategist with extensive experience in live entertainment. In his role, Kirk oversees branding and communications for the Amway Center for the Orlando Citrus Bowl, along with marketing of numerous events presented in those venues. And prior to that, um, joining the city of Orlando, he spent five years as the director of national marketing for Broadway Across America. So prior to that, Kirk was senior director at the marketing um, at the Florida Theatrical Association and the uh, Car Performing Arts Center. Kirk is on the board of directors at the Church Street District, the board of directors for events and marketing at the uh, arena. He's UCF Rosen School's hospitality management, and he's also a a, an advisor for our Full Sales Entertainment Music Business Program. So if you guys wouldn't mind just giving them all another round of applause before we get started with our questions. So as you can see, they all have extensive resumes. Um, so the first question I'd like to ask for, for the three of you is um, a general one, and it pertains to our students. So if you were uh, at graduation today and you wanted to share with our graduates rock, walking across the stage, what would you share with them? Well, let, let's see here. I can start. <clears throat> um, you know, first of all, you're, you're going into the working environment. You want to get jobs. And, and I know it's um, what goes through a lot of people's uh, mind is how do I get started? How am I going to get that first door um, knocked down so I can get a chance? I would challenge you to look at it from a whole other perspective that you're actually you're on a big wide highway and your uh, your opportunities are actually quite impre you know amazing if you look at all the possibilities of what you can do. You you won't be able to be selective right away. <clears throat> You'll have to find opportunity where it exists, but. Um, you know, take it one day at a time. <clears throat> Don't be frustrated. You will get opportunities, and uh, use your, you know, persevere, uh, and you'll you'll find opportunity. 
So a little follow-up question to that. I, I heard and I understand that um, when you had your first job, did you buy yourself, um, you, you, I heard that you decided to go to a place um, and you bought yourself a one-way ticket with no <coughs> return? Yeah, I left Orlando <laughs> on a one-way ticket to Dallas and that was 31 uh, years ago. So I uh, had an opportunity to go work for Shoco at the time, a sound company. And, and, you know, and I had to start just like everyone started, and it was r right at the grassroots of the company getting going. It was a time when we were developing new products, <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and so it was, uh, it was a great opportunity, a lot of fun, too. That's great. What about you, Phil? Well, it wasn't that long ago that I was on that stage. In fact, 2011 is when I graduated. And I do wish I had some advice when I was graduating, mm -hmm. and I would tell students that don't put too much pressure on yourself to know exactly what it is you're going to do the moment you leave because as confident as you are and what you think that's going to be you're probably wrong you know <laughs> you, you have to just exist you have to just let it happen but uh to balance that i would say be able to communicate who you are and why people should care because attention spans are getting shorter and this happens to be a very competitive industry so if you're confident in who you are knowing that that will evolve because we all evolve our brands are constantly evolving know how to communicate that it's going to help you that's great advice now follow-up question for you um, what was your first job oh gosh uh, well that's a long story I was lined up for an internship that I didn't end up doing so I had to figure out if I was going to go work for someone or I was going to start my own thing. Had you asked me at graduation if I considered myself an entrepreneur, I would be like, no. I just figured I'll go work for someone. I ended up applying for jobs at agencies that I didn't get called for. So I wanted to pay my rent to stay in LA. So I started helping people make websites. And I, I guess I was an entrepreneur, huh? So, you know, so that's, thank God it happened that way. Thank God I, no one called me because I didn't want to work for anyone. I still don't want to work for anyone. I work for myself and I get to call the shots and it's exactly how I like it. So again, things fall into place. Yeah, that's that's great. great. Thank you. What about you, Kirk? Uh, best advice I could give is probably embrace the journey. And it is a journey. And uh, like Leon was saying, there are, there are challenges and you, you need discipline you need to be focused, you need to persevere. But when I say embrace, I mean, you need to be open to everything because it's not gonna be easy. And if you guys wanna work in a career in live entertainment in particular, there's long, long hours. I can tell you firsthand, I've been working in live entertainment for 20 years now. There's long days and nights. So make sure you like what you're doing because if not, there's a lot of other jobs you can be doing back there. But embrace it because if you're not learning from failure, you're you're destined to repeat it again. So just make sure that you're absorbing everything possible and just be disciplined in knowing that as long as I acquire enough knowledge and experience and make the connections that matter, you'll eventually get where you wanna be. When I first, I know what your follow-up question is gonna be now. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I went to University of Florida. When I first got out, I, I ended up being a uh, marketing assistant for a yacht charter company down in Fort Lauderdale. and. Uh, I wasn't making anything, I, I'm not kidding you. And I was like, this is not gonna pay off. However, I did get to go sailing in the British Virgin Islands for a week on their dime. And I did some other travel with them. So it's not all bad, but it was a wonderful stepping stone for me. And, and I like to think that my career, everything has been a step in the right direction because it's stuff I'm passionate about. So I encourage you guys to find out what you get excited about and really go after it, because you can make it happen. Well, thank you all. Um, so it, it it probably doesn't necessarily turn out like you think as you're walking across the stage, right? So I gotta ask you guys, what keeps you inspired when you go through the challenging times? Because we all know there will be challenging times. I, I think for me, it's still uh, the love of music. I, I started playing music is how I got into audio. Um, one thing led to the next, but I still like going to shows. I like what our company does. I enjoy the you know, the, the, big, the big concert and the people getting excited. And um, that's never really uh, changed in my head. And 
and in my capacity to manage a, you know, about 180 road people, I get a big thrill out of watching other people build careers because I've watched over three decades people build really great careers. And it's very, uh, my biggest thrill right now is watching other people get an opportunity and do well at it. And I love having production managers call me up and go, man, the crew was awesome. You guys really rocked the, the gig, you know. So that's my, that keeps me uh, motivated on my, uh, my current uh, focus. And, and if I can, I, I second what Leon's saying that the industry I work in at both the Amway Center and the Orlando Citrus Bowl, it's all live entertainment. Any given night, there can be something going on. It can be a Orlando City soccer game. I mean, they're in their preseason right now or a concert. I mean, we've got some big stuff coming down the pike. And even if it's an artist or band that you don't care about, when you're in the building during that performance and the people are filing in through the front doors by the thousands, you can't help but be energized and excited about it because at that moment in time, they're the happiest people on earth because they're where they want to be. They're there supporting a fan. And if you're playing an arena, you've got a big enough following that you're not playing a little you know, independent club downtown for 300 people. I mean, you're playing to 10,000 plus, hopefully. And being around that inspires me. And I'm a huge music fan. I knew that I, upon graduation, I, I'm one of those people that got a degree and then went the completely different direction. Um, but I like to think that I'm where I need to be right now because I'm a fan of live entertainment, sports entertainment, uh, live entertainment, concerts. I go to music all the time. So the fact that I find myself in the arena uh, day in, day out for concerts and the Citrus Bowl for even bigger events, it, it's great. And that does inspire me because, I, I, again, I'm in the right place where, I, where it speaks to me. That's a great thing. We probably all work a lot because it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself to be very fortunate that I get to do a job that's so fun. I have the best job. Well, you guys have pretty cool jobs, too. Uh, <laughs> we all have cool jobs. But I truly feel lucky that I get to do what I do every single day. Um, and, and I think that students out there not necessarily knowing what that's going to be, but the fact that you made it this far to be able to pursue to be able to pursue something that you're so passionate about is pretty awesome because we get to actually go do it and we get to be the people that everyone else is jealous of because they have boring, ordinary jobs and we won't. Right. And that's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. So, of course, this session, you guys, is about leadership. So I want to ask you guys, what are the necessary skills you, you think the students need as they graduate and move on to their career, specific leadership skills that they need to bring with them as they graduate full sail? So, that's a, a very important topic. You know, I've done a lot of panels. Uh, not, not, is it turned off here? Here we go. Sorry. Uh, I've done, over the years, a lot of panels down here. And the whole big question comes up of technical skills or people skills. And when it, at the end of the day, when you work, um, when you show that you have good work ethic and you're considerate to other people, um, you know, that it tends to outweigh your technical skills that you can always be, you're always going to be learning something new technically. So you got to work on, on the, that foundation people skill to go be able to mesh with other folks and be able to be around an environment like a big production. Um, you know, so that kind of leads into the whole philosophy of leadership, I guess. And, um, you know, you really want to uh, try to hone in your skills to show other people that you're willing to work with them and that you can integrate into any kind of environment. And, you know, leadership's a, a big word, but it's, you know, you can be a, a good follower and be leading because, in a sense, you're helping a, an entire team accomplish a goal. So you don't have to be in charge to, to have leadership thinking, if that makes sense. So. That's a good, great answer. Thank you. Yep. What about you, Phil? I think um, one thing that's really inspired the way I try to lead is how I see my clients, who many of them are big and fancy people, that stay so cool when things go wrong and when someone has a little hissy fit and they take it out on someone else, that is an instant sign that they're either not a leader, you know, or they really need to work on their leadership skills to become a better one. Um, 
things will go wrong. I say in my business, truly, there are no emergencies. There's no such thing, and you can argue with me on this, there's no such thing as a branding or social media emergency. Some people say there <laughs> is, but there are bigger problems in the world. And I have to remind myself that sometimes, because sometimes it feels, or, or when you're working with busy people in, in, in the business, they will sometimes make their problems your problems. And you have to stay calm, and you have to stay positive, and focus on fixing things that go wrong, and, and empower people. Don't boss them around, or take out your stress on someone else. You have to do it in a positive way. And, and that way people will support you. Excellent, thank you. What about you, Kirk? Um, there's so much that we can all do to em empower ourselves and better ourselves. I think the biggest one though, if you guys are you know, degree in hand, diploma in hand, and you're ready to take on the world, I think the biggest thing is your attitude. It absolutely is. You need to be, being likable is important because people want to work with you. And if you have a poor attitude or you think the work is beneath you, especially when you're starting out, they remember that. In the live entertainment industry, you're going to be working with a lot of people again and again and again. I know this from experience and I'm sure Phil and Leon can agree to that as well. So the way you approach things and the way you interact with others, look at everything as an opportunity. So yeah, this is not what you intend to be doing for the next 30 years of your career, but take it for what it's worth don't bitch about it and turn it into an opportunity to get you where you need to be. And the attitude is so true. And there's, there's a, I don't know if it's an ad, adage, but it's a managerial thing that I've often heard. It's like hire for attitude, train for skill. And that's the truth. If you've got the right approach going into it, you'll go far. You can learn the skills on the job or in the process, but you gotta have the right attitude going in. Well, that's great. So they learn the skills here and then the, the attitude, the empowering others, all of these things need to to come into play as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so then my question for you guys is, um, what leadership quality has helped elevate your careers? So we know what advice you've given to our students and our potential graduates, but I'd love to hear, you know, what, what do you guys feel are the skills that elevated your careers? Yeah, the leadership skills. The, I, I would say, um, you know, you're gonna get in situations that it could be confrontational. You could be around people with um, egos that are having a bad day. You know, you're gonna get in situations that you have to um, be calm, be forward thinking, and try to, um, if you can kind of give off this, um, you know, vibe that you're, you can deal with it and that you're under control, you'll find that people will tend to Come, come into that world with you as opposed to you elevating and being confrontational. Um, it's really how you handle problems. I think it's uh, everything on the road is day to day, very situational, and you don't know what you're gonna run into. So be prepared to um, you know, f find a way that you can handle the this, this stressful moments, the confrontational moments possibly. Ho hopefully you don't have a lot of that. You know. If, uh, but you will at some point in time you're gonna have to overcome things and I think it's how you handle with problems we, we always say everything is great until you know you're a great audio guy until something goes wrong and then it's what do you do to fix the problem and you will make mistakes so um, a bit of humility you know own up to if you make a mistake you know you own up to it and you try to fix it so it doesn't happen again that's great, Leon. Um, I feel like the, the, the thing that you bring to the table is really your humility. So that's great. What about you, Phil? Well, I realized a few years into it, I thought that people were hiring me for information, you know, to get my strategies and to get tips on what to do on social media and to grow your brand until I realized, wait, everything that I teach people is online in some way, shape, or form. The information is out there. If, if content information is the only ingredient, then why do people keep coming back to me? It's not for information, it's for personality. It is very important to me that I am someone who is likable and, and, and someone that is positive and that is fun to work with. Yeah. Um, this isn't rocket science, it's fun, and I make it fun, and I keep it inspirational and exciting and people don't hire me for content they hire me for personality 
because, and I teach people to inject everything you do with your personality, because it is your secret weapon. It is what makes everything you do unique and memorable, and that's the whole point of all of this stuff. So that's, for me, when I, when that, I came to that realization where I was like, wait, if they just wanted information, they wouldn't keep coming back to me. They want my take. They want your perspective on things, and that is your competitive advantage. Yeah, that's great. They want your charisma. Mm -hmm. That's great. What about you, Kirk? What sets you apart? What leadership skill sets you apart from others? I'm a big proponent of being collaborative in the process. Even though I run my department with marketing and my previous roles, I've worked with a lot of people, but it's important to let them be on the team and have a voice on the team. If it was like, this is the way it's gonna be, no one wants to listen, and what do you do? You go complain when you're away from the boss. But when you pull everyone in and let them know that they have a voice, they have a say, and you weigh their opinions against yours, and you have to be receptive to ideas that conflict with your own, and sometimes those other people that are in the room with you have the best ideas. So figure out a way to bring them on board, be collaborative, and certainly be supportive. Now, ultimately, if you're the boss, if you ever find you're in a position, you get to make the final decision. But to make that decision solely on your own without the input of others, I think, is a flawed strategy. That may not be applicable across the board, but certainly in the position I'm in, I have a department meeting every week with my team, and, and I get a lot of great stuff out of them. And together as a team, we perform better than the sum, you know, or not the sum, than individually. Those are great points. When I started um, in the road, you know, I came off the road after about 10 years of travel and doing that. Um, not because I wanted to, I had the opportunity to, to develop training in our company and eventually got into road staff management. When I started doing that, there were only 18 road people and we're over 180 probably during the summer with subcontractors into the 200. So there's no way that I could um, manage everything all the time and, and, and you have to, I, I think, there's a point in time when you want to, you have to, de it's not really delegating, it's, it's giving other people an opportunity to make some mistakes and learn what you've learned, and you allow them to go off and, and, and what you want to do is elevate the people around you, and that, that makes things go better for, in, my, in our case, for the whole company. So, you know, uh, you know, the days of I'm the one that can do this and I'm the only one, you know, that. That kind of go. You have to get your head out of that at some point in time. Um, you, I have to, I've had to step back from things in order to get it to go forward. That might sound s strange, but sometimes uh, I like what you said about your team. You know, you let people, you listen to them, and you'd be amazed. Um, we all think we have great ideas, and sometimes we do. But sometimes the power of having a group of people with you that are thinking how to solve the same problem can be way more powerful than one person can ever be. That's excellent, thank you. I love, the, I love all your answers, you guys did great. So you guys are all in a position of hiring, right? So you, you hire people and you could potentially hire some of the people in the room or some of the people listening. What's the single biggest thing you look for when you're interviewing somebody? I'll jump in on this one, tangible skills. <laughs> so, you know, it's gonna be rare that uh, I come to you and say, here's the detailed job description and here's the qualities of someone I'm looking for. I don't have time for that. I'm like, here's what needs to get done and it need, the deadline was yesterday. Are you ready to do it? I look for tangible skills and I know when I started um, as an accidental entrepreneur, the reason people paid attention to me when I moved to LA, I had never been to California in my entire life from Canada, so I was an international student, and people weren't gonna hire me because I was nice or because I was driven. People hired me because I could help them make a website or help them build a logo or a brand identity. Tangible skills set me apart from other people because I could get the job done, go through the motion, and prove what I was capable of doing. So even now, I have employees and, and creatives that I work with for projects that have been promoted, that have a much bigger responsibility, but at first, they satisfied a need that I needed to fill. 
And so, Phil, get it? That's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, tangible skills will help you stand out from the rest to at least get your foot in the door. Even if it's not exactly what you want to do, it is an excuse to have conversation and to form relationships that will, may, turn into something big. And you can't anticipate those either. Don't form a relationship because you want something out of it. The relationships that you form simply based on good faith and good people, good juju, those are the ones that will actually return for you when you least expect it. Okay, that's great. So they've got the good skill, they're in the, you've, you're looking at the resume, and then in the interview, is there something else that looks, the good juju, is that what you look for too? Yeah, I, I am, and I think you guys can probably relate to this, talking about your teams, I am usually looking for ways to multiply myself. So if I meet someone and I see a similarity in the way that I do things, um, I, be I, I believe that you're, you're hiring someone based on their character, their tangible skills, but you can train them to do anything. It's, but you can't train someone to be a good communicator. I mean, I guess you probably could, but personality for me is key. And the fact that you're someone that I like to work with and someone that I look forward to interacting with. So it's more of a test of whether or not we fit in terms of personality than it is a list of, you know, credentials. I don't really, you know, I, I've said before here, I think we're here to go to school, but it's more of an exercise before you get out into the real world to start to form relationships as I did here. It was, the re it was not the knowledge I learned from a book that helped me launch my career. That gave me an excuse to interact with really great people, and it was people in these four walls. It was people here in this room that helped me launch my career. It was people, and, and that's, I think that's just the reality of it. It's easier said now, and I look back on it. Maybe didn't realize it at the time, but I think it's true. That's great, thanks. I think in your uh, book, page three, it'll describe leadership if you want to look it up. <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> it's one of those items that you just, ha or those topics that you, you have to learn and, and, and steer yourself to become a leader. It, you'll, you'll figure some things out along the way. And, and as far as the interviewing process from what I go through, um, you know, people tend to want to put things on a res. You want to be honest on your resume of what you've done, obviously, and you want to highlight yourself. I sometimes miss on a resume what's not there. Um, you know, it's like I go, well, okay, so you've done festivals, and they, I get this list of bands, and that's all cool. I, I get it. That's what we do. We deal with bands, and they go, well, well, what did you do over in this time frame? Well, you know, I waited tables, and I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, customer service. You've been around people. Don't, don't, don't think anything that you've ever done in your life in a working capacity doesn't apply to your next step. And, and don't be afraid of telling people that. I usually have to draw it out of people. So what else have you done? You know, what, come on, let's get into it. Yeah, well, you know, I lived on a farm. Okay, done some hard work, been around, no safety. Uh, you know, don't, don't be afraid to tell people what, all, all the things you've done. And uh, I, I would circle back for me to attitude and, you know, Phil's talking about personality. When we have a job opening or when we have an internship opening and we, you know, we have interns every semester and someone might look great on paper and be really disciplined, like following up, hey, when are you interviewing, following up, I think that's great. Okay, that tells me that this someone's focused. This is, they're determined to land this job. But it's amazing how much you can size up someone like that. Literally, you, you hear about, you never, never have a second chance to make a first impression where these people come in. And it's a lot of nonverbal cues, like the type of stuff they're wearing. What's their attire? Are they dressed like they're ready to take on the job? Are they making eye contact? Are they extending a hand? Or, or do they have a voice that's really low and you can't hear them? Or is it someone who's passionate and boisterous and like they want to convey their excitement and energy? I can size somewhat very quickly and usually we're pretty spot on. Uh, we have very few miss, sorry, misfires when it comes to hiring someone, either for a job or for an internship, because um, it's not, a solo process for me, I value my team and we're a small enough department that there's a certain dynamic that can be upset easily if we bring the wrong person on board. So I was just talking to the head of our business division uh, last night and uh, 
I, I somehow it came up that when I do interviews with people, because we're interviewing a box office assistant manager right now, I said, oh, well, when I do my interviews, it's with my whole department sitting there because I want to make sure the interaction works with everyone because, again, it can totally spoil that dynamic. I would say as a close second after attitude and personality because those are somewhat synonymous, I would say creativity. For what I do as a marketer and a communicator, I think it's important to have creativity. And I'm not just saying like come up with an idea, but just an approach, an innovation, something that tells me that you're thinking. It's not, oh, we're, we got a show coming, this is what we have to do. No, come up with ideas that I haven't heard before. And uh, creativity in just about any medium you're thinking of will take you a long, long way. So I would encourage you to read and expose yourself to what other people are doing, be it a case study or the latest trends and how can that relate back to what you're doing. But creativity is so important. And can you get that through an interview, or do you see that in it during an internship? We can, well, you certainly see it during an internship, and you know, occasionally you'll get some disappointments. But during an interview, some of the pointed questions we ask will throw them off. One of the ones I always like to ask towards the end, I mean, we have the kind of the nuts and bolts, okay, this is an interview. But towards the end, we'll ask something. If, uh, if you wrote an autobiography about yourself, what would the book be called? And that, whoa, I didn't think about that, you know? Um, that gets people thinking, and I've had some disappointments, like people just ponder for three minutes. It shouldn't take you a long time to say, okay, this is who I am, this is my brand, my personal brand. No one can sell yourself better than you, so what is it you try to convey? So that's one of a handful of questions we routinely throw out, and uh, you'd be surprised at some of the answers you get. I don't need something super crazy, but something that tells me, okay, that's an interesting take on it. Another one is like, if you could be any fictional character, who would it be, and why? And uh, you get some ones, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'd be a superhero, but I'm always intrigued by the ones that, like, wow, that's kind of obscure, but I understand your reasoning. That's interesting. So it tells a lot to me about them. That's great advice. That's really great advice. Okay, so we've been talking about all the great things that um, you need as, a, as a, a person coming out into the industry and to be a leader. What are some of the, can you think of anything that, can act, that you've seen derail a career? a leadership quality or, or a, a lack of leadership that you've seen to derail a career? I can, uh, I can tell you right off the bat, we've got a lot of millennials in the room right now. The, one of the biggest disappointments I see consistently is kind of a sense of entitlement that you're gonna get out, you've got your diploma, and you're gonna make $100,000 right off the bat, and you're just not being realistic. You have to work for it, and you'll get there. If you persevere, you'll get where you need to go. But the sense of entitlement that, oh, I don't wanna do that, that's beneath me. I mean, you need to, like I said earlier, embrace it. And you gotta start somewhere. And, and I think it was Leon was saying, if you were a server, I was a, senior, a server my final year at uh, UF, and I actually learned a lot. You learn a lot about customer interaction and stuff goes wrong and you, how do you deal with that type of stuff? So don't discount any of your privileges. If your work experience is limited to just being a camp counselor every summer, certainly you've picked up some great skills out of that if you've done it enough. So don't discount anything. If you're doing retail at The Gap, if you're a barista at Starbucks, there's all customer service skills which are so important which leads back to personality, how you engage and interact with others. That's great. I think I had a thought here. Um, <laughs> derailing. What do you try yeah, to derailing at, at um, I tell all global? What do you tell them? You know, because you yeah. you train the 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 guys. What do you what do you tell them not to do? There's a little line I use. I tell every new employee, and if you've heard me this week, you probably hear it for the third time. You, you never get sent home from a tour because you're bad at audio. So think about that. It's it's not because I've never had a call from a production manager that said, you know, this person here is just not really good at audio. It's always, yeah, they, they've missed the bus eh, second time, you know, the hotel, they didn't check out in time, bus had to wait on them, you know, uh, had maybe made confrontational comments to someone that was unnecessary or got someone else fired up or didn't handle something properly. And those are the things that will derail you. <clears throat> and in our industry, when tours go apart and back together, all the pieces, all the people move from one tour to the next. So the backline guy could be over on the next tour, guitar tech, let's say, a production manager goes here. And so, so now think, think of this. I think I just thought of this today. No, the, the, that topic I've thought of for, forever. But if, if you if you're, um, have issues on a tour and you don't make it, and everybody disperses and goes somewhere else, you're, you're, you could be in a bad situation times three 
if you get what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because the guitar tech might get wind. Ah, the company wants to send out, you know, Billy Joe here. Oh, man, he got sent home on that other tour I was on. Oh, yeah, really? When did that, you know? Next thing you know, you're having a heart. It gets hard. People, their path starts out really wide, and then it starts to narrow. That's in, our, in the industry I'm dealing with. I, I know maybe in marketing a little different, but um, going out into the field and doing all these touring projects, you have to be very careful how you know that you succeed. And um, if people like you and you have a problem, it's a lot easier than if people don't. You know, if they're having a problem with you, if if people like you, you can get past everything. Seems that way. I don't know. I can add some thoughts from a. Uh branding standpoint i totally agree with all of that um bad apples won't last very long they won't stick around for very long but i would encourage students to not be afraid to be something specific um that's been a common theme this week we're doing workshops and stuff and i, I realized this by experiencing it myself when you get out there you graduate the more titles you have on the end of your name, the more skeptical I become. Actor, singer, model, superstar, celebrity, mm -hmm. chef. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> you can't be all of those things and be really good at them. So don't be afraid to be specific, to, uh, to have a niche or a niche, however you want to say it. Uh, that is a positive thing. It shows confidence. It shows savvy that you know you know where there's a need that you're satisfying the internet is your oyster be something specific i have a list of about five students i've met in the last few days that did something very specific and i know for a fact i will call them when i need is those needs satisfied you know and i think it's 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 confident to be able to say, this is who I am and this is what I do. Don't try and do everything under the sun. Focus, don't be afraid to focus and by doing one thing really well and becoming the person to call for that, that's your goal. And then you earn the ability to expand. Starbucks did coffee really well and now they're like selling so many things we don't need. But the, the point is they became known for one thing, do one thing really well, and then you get to be an actor, model, superstar, chef. But not right away. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you, Phil. Anything that else is, is you want to add, Kirk? Before we turn it, we, we want to turn it over to the students to, to find out your questions. hands if you'll raise your hands and I'll come around to you make sure you okay um, hello my name is Sandra Fernandez and a question I would like to be answered from all of you is what was the hardest part when you just started your own thing my my own thing I, I've was playing in a band so that was my own and that was hard <laughs> but uh, to get <laughs> bookings but um, you guys are more of in the uh, self-employed world you might have a is that what you're asking oh to, to me it was a relief I'm gonna go do something I like into the mic um, I still, and I think any person on the path to success, I'm careful how I say that because I do not call myself successful because I, in my own definition, I am not successful yet. I have a path. I just have a long ways to go before I'll ever call myself that. I think I'm on the right path. Okay, I'll admit that. Mm -hmm. But I still, and I think people who have made it or who have built successful businesses still have moments, especially creatives, where you go, wait, what am I doing? Is this working? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, can I continue to do this forever? You always have those moments of self-doubt. I still have them often, and I think everyone does. And so you have to, you know, be in tune with, with you, how you're growing, how you're evolving, and position yourself for opportunities that will help you get to the next level. 
and be realistic about growth. I've had a lot of fun, even in some of these sessions, admitting everything that's going wrong in my business. Mm -hmm. There are areas where I know I need to get better at them. And, and, and to share that, I think people relate to that. There are all kinds of obstacles that you will face. Just acknowledge the fact that they're coming. They're on the way. You're going to have to deal with them. But at the end of the day, if you do something that you love to do, fantastic. Because it's not, you know, there are stressful moments. It's not easy. But if you do what you love to do, you'll be fine. It'll all work out. It always does. So, and, and for me, probably the hardest part when I started out, I was a lifeguard throughout college uh, in the summers, and that was the best job I ever had. In the sun all day, getting paid pretty well by college standards. And uh, when it was time, once I got my degree and it was time for me to get a job, um, and I took that job with the Yacht Charter Company and it ended up being a wonderful opportunity for me. But the hardest part at that point in time as a new graduate was being short-sighted. I've evolved since then. But in that moment, I thought, I should be making more. Back to this entitlement, like I'm worth more. But again, I took it for what it's worth. I thought that this is as good as it's gonna get. But hopefully we all have long careers and long lifespans and you realize that you'll eventually get where you want to go. So where I once started out short-sighted and thought, Ugh, how could I possibly get here and make a nice income and have everything I want in life to you know, 20 years later, I'm like, you know what? Everything seems to work out. As long as you stay true, you'll get there. And I honestly believe that. For me, that's, that's like my personal mantra. You, you'll get there. You just have to be accepting and be ready for it. So uh, my short-sightedness now, it's not an issue. I, I know how to manage expectations with myself. That's great. I think the obstacles, I always say our defeats are the making of us. Mm -hmm. You learn so much from every obstacle. And so it's just another opportunity for growth. I always say it's a it's a kind of a walk before you run program in life, you know. Figure out how to go slow, and then the speed comes over time. And the good, you know, you'll you'll evolve into the things that you really, you know, want it to become. And it right now, you what you're doing is you're building a foundation. You know, I, I think I said in another group, tall things fall over if they don't have a big base. So you want to keep working on your your base, get get, get that going, and and the rest of it does tend to fall in place. I, I couldn't, you know, there's no way I could have said 30 years ago I'd be sitting here even, or be in the position I'm in. Just there's no, but things evolved, and I just kept true to, the, to my own mission to be happy doing audio and being around music, and things kind of take their, you know, there's a little force out there that helps steer you. I don't know what, you know, but mm -hmm. it, it, it does go that way. Mm -hmm. you know? Greetings to you all. My name is Saquon Johnson. And my question is, when do you feel that when you came alive throughout your journey of success? When do you feel, what was the when do you feel you came alive with, in your journey to success? Oh. Depends Did how I you get define. that right? Yes. Success could be a state of mind, right? Mm -hmm. But so I don't know how you define success. To me, I, it wasn't my, my starting pay on the road wasn't a whole lot, but the success was doing the job. So um, success, again, you know, it's kind of how you want to define it, but, but for me, it was being on the journey and having the opportunity was, that was success in itself. That's great. For me, it was the realization that money is great, it's great, I mean, I, I like money, <laughs> but I love freedom. For me, it was to be in a position, I'm thankful that I didn't even intentionally choose a job that I can do from anywhere in the world. I love to travel, so I do. I do it because I can. I can work from home, I can work from anywhere, so I do. And the realization that uh, I set my own schedule and I can do whatever I want that was that moment for me where I was like, wow, this worked out really well. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy because I thought, okay, I know I need to make money. I know I need to be successful, whatever, however we define that. But to be free is so much more important. And to be in control is the best. It's the best part. Good one. I, um, I would think for me, you know, success is different on so many levels for everyone. Um, 
it's probably when I started working in live entertainment because my whole life I've been obsessed with music and it started from a very young age when my parents would always spin you know, their albums, yeah, not CDs, not streaming, albums, and I'd look at the Fleetwood Mac album cover, Bob Seger, Beatles, and, and it's amazing the stuff you absorb when you're younger, not even paying attention, and you guys may not even know who Neil Diamond is, but he came through town about eight years ago, and I went with a friend, a, a buddy of mine gave me tickets, and um, I was surprised at how many of those tracks I knew. Had no idea, had no idea, you just absorbed it. So working in live entertainment now, it, to me, that was when I, I felt like I've kind of arrived because my, my heart has always been into arts and culture and particularly the live experience. And uh, I can honestly say for the last you know, 18, 20 years, I've been doing that. So uh, you know, I'm being true to my passions, my interests, my goals, and I, it's rewarding. I do not dread going to work. And I remember much earlier in my career, I had friends of mine that I grew up with and those that I made at college that went off and were pharmaceutical sales reps or they were attorneys and did something else and they were making crazy money and I'm thinking, oh man, I'm never gonna catch up. But you know what? They hate their jobs. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I like my job and that's so important. And you guys, I, I think I said it earlier, you're gonna be working some really long hours if you stay in this industry. You might as well enjoy what you're doing. Hello, I have a question from our YouTube viewers. As you have reached this stage in your careers now where you use your expertise to guide others, what are techniques that you use to get people to take your advice? That's a good one. Uh, I, I think what I've had to learn how to do is not expect people to take my advice all the time, but over time um, have conversations that are very uh, reciprocating and, and you'll find sometimes people will, you can kind of lead people into a direction over time. Um, but if it's, you know, advice also has to be received by the one getting the advice. Uh, I don't know how to make people, you know, uh, everything I say to be exactly the way they want to hear it maybe or the or what you know what works for them but um, I don't know that you can expect to give everybody advice and they'll always take it we but but however if you're listening to people in the in the industry that have been around a while the the odds are it's pretty good advice I, I still listen to people older than I that have been in the industry to get advice so I'm still getting advice if you will <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's you said that really well I'm like what else do I say to that that's so true some people will listen most people won't and it's the people that take your advice and actually execute are the ones who will make it not everyone here is cut out for the entertainment business it's glitzy it's glam it's great it looks fantastic but when you actually get into it and you actually do the work whoa you find out who's Medford and who isn't and all the opportunities are here I think full sales like puts it so that it's, they're staring at you in the face. Every club, every opportunity, career development. Don't even get me started on that rant. If you've seen me before, you know I'm the biggest fan in the world of career development. It's the whole reason for Full Sail. You know, all of these opportunities are staring at you in the face. If you think you're just going to go through your courses and graduate and just be a rock star, nope, it doesn't work that way. You know, you need to take action. Ideas are great, but when you can actually execute them, that's when you'll actually accomplish something. So when people give you really good advice, Write it down, stick it in your notebook somewhere. Keep track of it. Acquire all of these ideas, put them down. I see people writing this, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but actually do it, follow through, execute. That is how people grow and, and build a career. Good. Hi, my name is Christian, I'm from Ecuador. Uh, I was looking at a video about Elon Musk, and he, he don't like marketing. He say, first, you have to have a quality product to start selling. W uh, what do you think about when, when is the right time to get like, fans and branding your, your product or your company? Hmm. 
I kind of see that perspective because I'll relate it back to building a personal brand. Uh, I mean, when I started, I started to get clients and they never came to me and they were like, Phil, I have lots of money. Let's spend it. You know, that is not what happens. <laughs> so when you're positioning yourself, I like to think that you're satisfying a need, you individually, like any good business does, so that you shouldn't have to spend money on marketing or advertising. You know, ideally, that's not actually the case, but you position yourself for success by satisfying a need like every good business does. Something you love, here we go with the Phil sound bites. Something yeah. you love is a hobby. Something you love that others need and are willing to pay money for it is a brand. So I see that perspective. And I, and I think in an ideal world, yeah, you want to be wanted. You want people to come to you. Let's play hard to get, people. Yeah? So that's how you have to think of it. And, and ideally, how you position yourself, you've researched that, and, and you're doing it with purpose. I think that it kind of fits with that, that knowledge or, you know, that kind of, that, that, that perspective. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, question over here is, have you ever encountered a person that has true leadership qualities but isn't in a leadership role? <laughs> I, I've seen that quite a bit and what you have to do is if you're in a position where you can ultimately help them work towards that, you've got to keep them inspired, keep them in the game. Um, you know, it's very difficult to get where you want to be right from the outset, but if you can encourage that, and again, this comes back to your personality. If you can be supportive and encourage them like, Hey, we'll find a way to make it work out for you. Um, guess who's going to remember that, that person, and if they persevere and they end up getting in a position, whether within your organization or somewhere else, they're gonna remember that. And this really, entertainment is all about relationships. It really is. And if you were supportive, I remember back when I first started doing Broadway, um, I was based locally here. I traveled to New York quite a bit, um, but I worked with press agents around the clock every day of these national Broadway tours. And there's one in particular, a veteran press agent who scared the hell out of me. When she emailed you, it was all caps. <laughs> and she just had a, a, just a driven personality, a total A-type, and she scared the crap out of me. But she's one of those people, like Leon said, like if you came home and it was, no one comes home for bad audio, you come home for other reasons. Well, she was one of those people that keeps popping up. Every season, she would be on at least one or two productions that I'd work with. But guess what? After the first interaction with her, the first show, I ended up being insanely supportive of who she was. And it's no mistake she got where she is as a veteran uh, press agent. And it's because she's disciplined, she's focused, all these things we're talking about. And she scared me at first, and we ended up becoming very close. And I actually look forward to say, oh, we got this show coming and I'm gonna be working with you. And the whole, the touring business, at least with Broadway, it was like, oh, we got this show booked for six months out. And there's this kind of courtship going on where you would talk maybe once a week and then, oh, the show's a month out, and then you start talking once a day, and then the show's a week out, and you guys are talking all day long, and then the show happens, and it's like you break up, and you don't hear from each other again for six months, but then they come back. But it's funny how for someone like that, who at one point intimidated me and scared me, and I, c I can guarantee you, virtually anyone who was in my position back then would have felt the same way about this press agent, but then when you realize who she is, and it, she does it from experience, and she was actually supportive towards me, it plays out. So I've seen that in other people. So if you have an opportunity to help someone else who might be kind of uh, not in the ideal position, but they have such potential, just keep fostering and nurturing that because they'll get there and eventually they'll get that opportunity either within your company or elsewhere. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add, I'm really hoping, I'm hoping I'm surrounding and hiring people that have leadership qualities. So, you know, your point is interesting. If, if, if we do foster and we do help people grow, I'm, when I'm hiring, I'm looking for the next crew chief and the next person that can um, take a big tour and take it down the road and, and, and be that leader. So I, I really hope I'm surrounded with people that do have leadership qualities. But, but it's also to be in those positions, 
you know, you'll, you'll earn some of those positions, you know, it comes over time. Um, but I'm, you know, the, y you want people to be thinking that way. And then it does take the, the company and the other elements of the company to help uh, let those leadership qualities surface to the top and, and get where they're going. And, and I think that's important, um, as you were saying, to, to help people grow. Very good. We have another YouTube question for the panel. At this point in your careers, do you engage in any self-reflection about how you got to where you are and prepare yourself for where you're going next? I love that question. I also love your voice. You should do voiceovers. <laughs> good voice. It is a good voice. Yeah. It's a, I thought it was a robot at first. I was like, that sounds <laughs> like a perfect voice. Yeah, really good. I only ever think about where I've come when I'm telling stories to other people, usually at dinners or I think successful people don't really think about where they've come. They think about where they're not yet, you know, where they're going. Um, and I, and I like those kind of gentle reminders from friends or people that say, wow, that's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is really cool. And you kind of forget, and it's easy to forget, and I think people do it. You're so focused on what you don't have yet, and where you're going. It's like an addiction, you know? What, you, you gotta go, bigger, bigger, bigger. Uh, so for me, it's conversations that I have where I get to reflect, and I feel proud. Like, I have those moments where I'm like, yeah, it is cool. I think what I, what I do is kind of crazy, it's kind of fun, it's really fun. So that's when I have those moments of reflection is when I'm usually telling a story to someone else uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> That's good. I was just going to say, usually speaking to students like this, these opportunities, they're always always like, oh, okay, that's my path. That was my journey or is my journey. I'm, I'm in it right now. Um, I wouldn't say I sit at home. I'm like, hmm, how did I get here? I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if we can impart any wisdom or our experiences and help you guys kind of figure out where you need to be going, uh, I welcome the opportunity. Hi, my name's Crystal. Um, I was wondering if there was ever anything you wanted, to, if you ever thought about it, anything in the past that you regret or that you wanted to change about your career. It's pretty hard to change the past, but if you had to go back, um, you know, I, I think there's, I've had some ambitions that maybe I wish I'd have worked harder on, maybe, but you know, Life is real. You live it. You, you know, I look at what's around me and how things are going, and um, I don't think I can complain. Uh, I, I, th I think if you have a good direction and you stay true to it, you probably won't be thinking, hopefully won't be feeling that, you know. Uh, what do you think of that? Yeah, for the first time, I have nothing to say. Yeah. There's nothing I would change. Not at all, because yeah. even the things that you thought that went, that went wrong, those are the biggest lessons you learned. So no, there's nothing I would change. Maybe, maybe hiring other people to help me out earlier is probably, that's probably what I would, because I was a bit stubborn in making it the Phil show. And, and actually, when you bring other people into the mix, you do a much better work, uh, which has already come up on this panel. So yeah, but I don't know. I, I don't regret anything for sure. I don't think I have any real regrets either, um, you know, other than the fact that I should have been in a band. I would have, had I persevered, <laughs> it would be nice to meet, have me be the one up on stage playing drums every night, but that wasn't in the cards for me. So. That's a good one. Hi, my name is Chrisisha Conley, and I have a fun question for you guys. So if you guys were in a band and the leader of a band, what would you name your band? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm actually in a band at, <laughs> on every Sunday in a, in a church band. Um, I, I don't know if I can answer that. This is the scariest question I've ever been asked <laughs> yeah. on a I, panel. I might have I'm to I'm freaking leave. out right now. It's tough because you guys are going to judge us no matter what we yeah. say. Yeah. This is terrifying. I think, isn't that one of those things where you're supposed to pick a color and then the last thing of food you had and then yeah. put the two together and then that's what you are. your stripper name or you're something. You're a yellow right? omelet. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, yellow omelet would be my band. Yeah. Oh, that's great. God. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> For once. <laughs> You stumped them. Yes. Uh, wow, congratulations. <laughs> great. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Matthew uh, DaCosta, and I just have a question for you. When did you kind of figure out that you knew you were really good at what you do, and uh, you could be confident in that good. to pass on that knowledge to others and to go after what you wanted? I'm not that good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just I think it's helpful when you start getting feedback from your peers, certainly if you're in a position where you have boss or bosses above you, getting feedback is crucial. So I would encourage you this, if you ever find yourselves in a career where you have people under you, give feedback. Not just the negative kind, give positive. Say thank you, let them know you appreciate their efforts and their time and their innovation, whatever the, it is that they bring to the table. Too often when we get feedback, it's always negative. This, 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 you could have done this, you missed the deadline, why didn't you do it this way? This is what we discussed, this is not what you did. That might be fitting if it happens some of the time. But to never praise someone, a simple thank you goes a long way. So I would encourage you to Show that. Show others that you appreciate their time, and, and it makes a big difference. You know, to, to be a little more serious, I, you know, the, um, the, I, worked in, in, I work in the personnel world, and I, I like that. You know, I enjoy dealing with people on the level that I deal with. So, you know, so for me, um, m maybe some things I do have take a skill set that some other people may not have, you know. And and I find it a challenge to offer that challenge to other people that I work with to uh, get involved in, in what I'm doing and to uh, learn how to do it. Because quite frankly, you know, there's a day coming when um, we're all going to move on and do other things. And in the in, when you're in a company, one of the things I would pride myself in would be to be leaving and not hurting the company, knowing that I've flooded them with everything I know and that <clears throat> they're gonna be okay. You know what I'm saying? So I so I, I think that's because I'm, you know, in my third going into, you know, after three decades of this, my, my thinking is I have to contribute downstream to people that are coming up because that's important for the growth of the company in the thirty years from now that I won't be around. So that's I would love to be one of those people who is A-type, takes initiative to get to make things happen because you've got this idea, so you hustle and make it happen. But in fact, many of the decisions I've made within my career and things that I've done are based on the positive feedback that people have given me. Uh, so, so I am one of those people that it was the feedback that actually prompted me to make things happen. To reiterate, that's the importance of sharing it. When I wrote a book, I didn't really write a book about what the book is called Shut Up and Tweet. Uh, I didn't write it because it's what I wanted to do. I asked my students. I had a chance in, when I moved to LA to, to teach and to work with TV hosts. And thank God for that because I spent a year figuring out what it was, what this knowledge is that I share with people and to be able to figure that out and, and have that opportunity to exercise that and and I went back to my students and I said what's the most important thing or what's the most what's the most useful thing that you've ever learned from me and they said Twitter strategy so I was like perfect I'll write a book about it so I don't have to teach people individually they can go and read it you know so it, it is that it is exactly that feedback positive feedback that we unfortunately don't have enough of because people are very quick to complain and, and point out what's wrong. What about what's right? Because what you, when you point out what's right, that inspires people to take that a step further. So that has been one of the most important parts of all the decisions and the projects that I've done in the last few years is, is based exactly on, on that feedback. Um, hi everybody, my name is Duarte. Thank you for your time here, first of all. 
Uh, I wanted to direct this question strictly for you, Phil, uh, since you're a service, pr service provider too. Uh, I have that issue right now. Like a lot of people come to me and ask me stuff like, what do you think I should do? What kind of strategy and stuff? What, what was the moment that you felt like, I gotta stop giving advice and I gotta start charging for this? Uh, I'm just being real because most of them are my friends and I create relationships with them, but you know, I gotta, I gotta have pay yeah. for my rent, you know? That's mm -hmm. a really good question and it never gets less awkward. Right? When someone asks for a favor, someone asks for help, or Phil, can I take you for coffee? Well, no, I can buy my own coffee. And I'll stay at home and work, because that's how I make a living. It's a challenge uh, to, to have help when it comes to pricing and to business. My business partner has a strict rule. She wasn't always around, but she's around now, thank God, because I'm not allowed to price stuff. I'm not allowed to talk about budgets or money, and I like it that way. People want me. They want, when they come for a service, you know, we, we structure it as a product. You're getting a brand identity or a website, whatever it is, a social media strategy. You're getting something, but it really is an excuse to, an engage, to engage and to build something together, but they want me. And if I'm gonna grow, a business and scale and give opportunities to others to be a part of that and also not have a nervous breakdown, I have to monetize my accessibility. So in a setting like this where there are more people, you know, sharing the experience, that would be like a workshop or something like that that you would do. And you're obviously not going to charge as much as you would if you're sitting down one-on-one -on -one with someone consulting. My best advice, and this is more recently learned than I would like to admit mm -hmm. is bringing in help to just let someone else handle it. Someone that's good at that stuff. Because I'm nice and I love to chat and I will chat your ear off all day. But if that's what I'm going to do and I'm not getting paid for it, my sink is going to ship. Or my ship <laughs> is going to sink. Uh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, have, have some help with that. My advice is do it now. Don't wait, because I waited too long. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, I think we're about out of time. Um, thank you guys so much for attending the session today, both here and online. And I especially want to thank you guys, Leon, Phil, and Kirk. You guys did a great job and imparted so much wisdom and advice to, to these guys here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.